Well, unfortunately, as sometimes happens, I sat down, filmed all the footage I needed to for this video, and all of it was out of focus. So here we are refilming the portions of the video that I needed to refilm because actually a big chunk of this video is going to be first impression and demo of this box because I had not yet had the pleasure of trying two of the three products in the box. This month's Beauty Heroes box is featuring Josh Rosebrook, a brand that the Beauty Heroes community is already very familiar with, knows and loves. There have been at least two and I want to say three three Josh Rosebrook boxes in the time that I have been reviewing the boxes. I think they've done one annually. I know that there's been a hair care box, there was a box with the antioxidant cacao mask, and then there was a box last summer with the nutrient day cream. So the hero product this month is the Active Enzyme Exfoliator. It's an exfoliating facial mask and it kind of has two-step exfoliation, chemical and physical. The sidekicks are the Advanced Hydration Mask, which came out around the same time that the Vital Balm Cream did, which was featured as a sidekick in a previous box. There's also a travel size of the Hydrating Accelerator. This has been a sidekick in other Josh Rosebrook boxes as well. The total value this month is $125 for these three products. Essentially, if you're new, the subscription model is you sign up for three months at a time. You would get this box as well as the October and November box. What better time is there than fall to do like a three month beauty subscription? Skin is in transition, looking for some new products. You have until September 20th to subscribe unless they sell out before. Please let me be in focus this time. Okay, so as I mentioned, the bulk of this video is actually going to be demo footage, but I thought I would give you just a little bit of background on Josh Rosebrook, though I will also have linked down below the previous Josh Rosebrook reviews I've done, where I've given a little bit more background on the brand, but for this video, since I've done at least three Josh Rosebrook specific videos before and talked about his sort of back backstory, founder story, I'm just gonna kind of dive right in telling you about the products, show you the demo first impression footage, and then come back and tell you what I've thought about the products since using them for the first time. Okay, let's start with the Hero product, the Active Enzyme Exfoliator. Now, if a product in Eco Beauty ever had, I guess like cult status, even though I really don't like using <laughs> all of the popular beauty terms like holy grail, cult status, whatever, a lot of people love this product. Uh, Lisa, this organic girl I know has, has sung the praises of this for a long time. She's a friend of mine. And then more recently, I have been really, really obsessed with holistic estheticians generally, but in particular, this woman, Haley Wood or Woods, uh, the therapeutic skin coach. I've been digging into all of her back blog content and she has some video content as well. And she uses this regularly in her treatments. I had always shied away from both of these products and I'll tell you why. The active enzyme exfoliator, I had heard, and this is something I am intending on emailing Jeannie about to get clarification on. There are walnut shells in here that provide the physical exfoliation. There is chemical exfoliation provided enzymatically through honey and papaya primarily. And then the physical exfoliation is through these walnut shells. In skincare, you need to distinguish, or I have always thought you need to distinguish between unpolished versus polished walnut shells in skincare. The risk is if you have unpolished walnut shells as a physical exfoliant, you can run the risk of micro tearing your skin. I have heard. As with everything, I feel like there's a lot of fact in fiction, especially the way we consume information on social media. So it's something I need to dig a little bit deeper into. But that was just something I had heard, that there are unpolished walnut shells in here and that it can potentially be too abrasive for particular skin types, especially more sensitive sensitized or compromised skin barrier types. The advanced hydration mask, I had kind of shied away from because I didn't, I'm one of those weird people that didn't really like the Vital Balm Cream. I didn't really like the texture, the occlusive nature, the scent, which I know is very strange because people go absolutely bananas over it. As is the benefit of these sorts of subscription boxes where someone is doing the curation for you, uh, you get to try pairings of products that actually go really well together. And things maybe 
you hadn't been thinking of for yourself, you get the opportunity to try. So in addition to the enzymes from the honey and papaya, there is also yucca, beetroot, and elderberry, which act as sort of natural skin softeners and help with skin congestion. It has a very herbal, Ayurvedic, Chinese medicine kind of smell. Like if you were to cross Ayurvedic skincare and Chinese medicine skincare. That's sort of what this smells like to me. It also has ashwagandha, coriander, horse chestnut, goji berry, licorice, turmeric. Those are all sort of skin brighteners. And it has kind of like a warming quality to it, uh, which is, I think, amazing as we're transitioning into fall skincare. And I think a lot about how our skin needs to transition between seasons, and this is something that holistic estheticians talk a lot about and why I'm so obsessed with them lately. Brita Beauty and Therapeutic Skin Coach in particular, maybe I'll do a whole video on this, but I feel like I need to do a little bit of a deeper dive. I'm, I'm kind of in my own exploratory phase with it. The Advanced Hydration Mask, they say that this is great for all skin types, but if you are dry and dehydrated, they say that you can use this daily. If you're more oily and don't need as much hydration two to three times per week or kind of as needed, I do think that, I mean, they're sort of describing both of these products for all skin types. I think that that's accurate. You just kind of need to adjust how you're using them for your skin type. So the mask helps uh, maintain cellular hydration with ingredients like senna seed, aloe vera, mango seed butter, honey, avocado, blue tansy, rose, and St. John's wort. To me, the ingredient overlap between this and the Vital Balm Cream had seemed quite similar, but after having used them both, they're, they are different. The Hydrating Accelerator, I think we kind of like all know and love, has a really beautiful light vanilla marshmallow scent. It's supposed to help with trans epidermal water loss. First ingredient is aloe vera leaf juice, which is great. It's not like in a water base. However, I have said before that I don't actually think that this is like super hydrating on me, but I feel good about using it, especially as a during the day mist, because it is in an aloe based formula, which is a humectant and will not leach water and hydration from your skin as it sort of evaporates off. It has lots of really great extracts in it. I've gone through so many bottles of this and I always enjoy using it. So I'm going to show you now the demo and first impression footage. I essentially followed the beauty ritual that was laid out in the insert. I thought that this would be a fun, a sort of interactive way to demo the products in this month's Beauty Heroes box. My skin is in need of a little bit of help. What better way to test out these products than whip out my camera and show you kind of a first impression and show you actually the products in action. So my skin is clean. I took a shower. What I'm gonna do to get started and sort of prep my skin since I don't need to wash it is I'm just going to take a washcloth and get it quite hot and do a gentle steam to prep the skin for the active enzyme exfoliator, which is gonna be the first mask that I'm going to use. So I know I'm probably saying this in other parts of this video, the sit down portion, but I've always been a little wary of this product because of the walnut shells that are in it. It has always seemed a little bit abrasive to me. Um, and my skin type, I tend to get very sensitive here on my cheeks and I don't like to do anything, you know, overly intense or abrasive there. So the pot of product comes sealed. So we're just going to remove the seal. It smells quite nice. You see that flushed my skin a little bit, but Let's just go directly in with the mask now. I'm gonna kind of like get the residual off this liner top so I don't waste it. So it has sort of the consistency of like honey almost. I'm just going in with my fingers. I'm not super precious about my products, honestly. I might need to bring in a little bit of water to get it to spread. Although maybe not. I'm gonna do a medium, light to medium layer of this. I actually think you do need some liquid to spread it, otherwise you're gonna end up going through quite a bit of product. I'm gonna be very gentle around my cheeks. It's a bit of an odd smell. Let me get it on and then I'll assess.
Okay, so you can see that I left a pretty big area around my eyes and I tried to not get it too much on my cheeks. I am going to be doing a full multi-mask with the advanced hydration mask all over my face after, but while I leave just the this product on this part of my face, I think I'm going to take the advanced hydration mask under my eyes and on that little exposed part of my cheeks right now. This product I had a feeling was going to be a lot like the Vital Balm Cream, which is not actually what's in here, but I have tried the Josh Rose Brook Vital Balm Cream. It similarly has a lid that you need to peel off, and it actually looks very similar to the Vital Balm Cream. Just do this as a little protective layer right here. Very, it smells very strongly of blue tansy, more than the Vital Balm Cream does. I think today I'm going to do, let's do 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, my skin is on the more sensitive side right now, so I don't really wanna go more than that. Just as sort of a first impression having it on, the smell going on was a little bit intense, but now that it's on my skin, it's not kicking up a very strong scent. Let's just see how I feel when it comes off. I really am liking this hydration mask under my eyes. I'll be back in about 25 minutes. Okay, here we are. It has been 25 minutes. I haven't really experienced any tingling or uncomfortability. The scent uh, you can detect, obviously, and I've had the last 25 minutes to ponder what it makes me think of, and I think it reminds me of a tea I used to drink on this like liver cleanse I used to do and probably would never do <laughs> today. I actually have videos on YouTube about that, and I still get questions in my inbox about that cleanse, and I'm like, no, it's not fun and I don't really recommend it. So I'm just gonna use some lukewarm water and I'm gonna gently just remove this over the sink right here. I'm gonna focus on taking it off very gently and I'll let you know sort of how it feels coming off. This is quite a messy one. The exfoliating agent feels more like sugar than anything. It sort of feels like raw sugar. I really don't want to um, like over exfoliate my skin. So I'm doing a mixture of like circular motions off and then just rinsing. Okay, that is a messy one. It's probably most ideal to remove in the shower, but you know, no problem, it's totally fine. My skin feels baby soft right now. That is a very nice immediate effect. Um, at least to the touch. So now what I'm gonna do per the little insert in the box, I'm gonna spray my face with the hydrating accelerator. I've gone through so many of these. These are really nice to keep around for travel. And now let's do the hydrating mask everywhere. A really generous amount. Not a huge blue tansy person, which I know is sort of blasphemy, but it smells very, very nice in this. I feel like a little bit of this goes a longer way than the exfoliating mask too. Allow the mask to sit on your skin for 15 to 20 minutes. Use a washcloth or reusable face wipe. Remove any excess mask. Do not rinse the mask off with water to maintain the sealed in hydration. I'll be back in 20 minutes. I'm actually, the last 25 minutes, I was just listening to Erica Badu and doing some image transfer between uh, posts I liked on Instagram onto my Pinterest board, which I should do way more often, but I'll sort of batch do it every couple of months. So I'm doing it right now and it's actually highly enjoyable. So I'm gonna go spend my next 20 minutes doing that and I'll be back to take this off, give you sort of my final first impression thoughts. Okay, we're here with the final installment of this morning skincare routine of mine. Um, this has been very, very pleasant to have on my face. The smell is not too overpowering. So I think I'm gonna do the face wipe removal technique, just because I'm sort of running low on washcloths and need to do laundry. So I'm just gonna use one of these Acure wipes to do this. You can see, but you can see the mask sort of coming off. I 
Okay, so it makes it very easy. This would be a little more difficult washcloth. Okay, the final verdict is that my skin feels great. I'm gonna do a final spritz of the hydrating accelerator and then I don't think I have to do anything else to my skin. I think the only thing I'm gonna do is wait a little bit and put some tinted moisturizer SPF on. A lot of times when my skin feels good after using an exfoliating product and a moisturizing product, I don't really feel like I can see the visible results right away. A lot of times for me, those come the next day uh, where I can feel like my skin looks smoother, brighter, um, whatever. Right now, it just looks sort of plump and moisturized to me, but it feels amazing, like very, very comfortable and um, happy. I think at this point now in the video, I will transition back to my thoughts kind of over time after I've you know, seen, seen what my skin is like tomorrow or continue to use these products. Um, but I thought this little first impression would be fun and demo, so I hope you liked it. Okay, now that you've had a chance to see the first impression and demo footage, I wanna talk about how I have felt about the products after using them for that first time and how I've kind of continued to use them. So I have been still using the Advanced Hydration Mask, but I haven't been using it in conjunction with this, um, but I have done like a light AHA mask, the one from Pi. My sort of initial impression of this product is that it was going to be a little bit too aggressive for my particular skin preferences. So a lot of people, I find more people than not, gravitate towards aggressive skincare where they're really gonna see results. After I did this whole ritual that you just saw, my skin was re really nice. I didn't need to put anything on after I had removed the hydration mask and toned. I didn't add any additional moisture. I felt like my skin was very deep cleansed, really well exfoliated. It looked great for the rest of the week, really. Um, I saw great results the day after, it was just really nice. My issue, I guess, and I think this is just like very individual, I have always liked skincare that is sort of slightly less obviously intense or aggressive because I worry a little bit that I may, will create a dependency in my skin towards needing deeper, more intense exfoliation. I have a lot of friends kind of all ages in their 30s and, and into their 40s and beyond. And the general trend is that the older that you get, people tend to want more aggressive skincare. They're not getting the same results from skincare that may have been working before. My philosophy, which is ever evolving and in being informed by constantly learning from different estheticians and in particular more recently these holistic estheticians, I really try and have a long range approach where less is more. Even if I get really outstanding results from something that if it feels a little bit too intense for me, then I'm just, not that I'm never going to use it, but this, for example, is way too much to be a weekly treatment for me. This whole ritual would be kind of like a once a month, maybe a twice a month kind of thing. You sort of whacking this on multiple times a week or weekly, I think my skin would sort of initially really like that kind of really intense chemical physical combination. But over time, then I feel like I would have to step up to keep getting the same results. And I feel that people that are really reliant on like acid toners and things like this can get to that point. Now, in the grand scheme of skincare, these are extremely gentle products compared to, you know, Biologique Recherche and a lot of what you hear in the conventional beauty world. So I'm not trying to say that I think you're at all in danger of over exfoliating or creating a dependency in your skin or, or sort of anything like that. I certainly don't. It's very individual. So my skin has been especially sensitive for the last six or seven months. And I've just kind of had to work with it um, in a way that it, it wasn't necessarily before. And I think just kind of goes to show that your skin is its own organism responding to environmental and life circumstances. So because my skin has been more sensitive, I've had to dial back how much I mask in general. My skin just hasn't needed or wanted really intense exfoliation. The combination of these three products together is outstanding, and this is one of my favorite curations of 2018 so far. Even though as a more sensitive skin type person right now, I'm not getting as much of use out of these as, as maybe some other people, the curation is phenomenal because the way these products work together to create a result 
is stunning. It's really, really beautiful, and I'm super glad that I've gotten to try it. I think that's kind of everything that I wanted to share about these products. Uh, I would love to hear from you in the comments, as always, if these are new products to you, how they've been faring with your skin type. Um, I just think that intuitive skincare is increasingly the trend, at least kind of the holistic trend in eco-beauty. Everybody's skin is really individual and, and constantly evolving. So you may go through a period of time where you use one or both of these more than another, but I think especially as we're transitioning into fall, more judicious with the actives and more liberal with the hydrating, nourishing products, is probably on docket for most people, but also you can just sort of dial back, like maybe just leave this on for five minutes versus 25 minutes and leave this on for half an hour versus 10 minutes or something. So love that this is how they have timed going into autumn skincare transition with products like this. I think it contributes to that conversation of being intuitive with your skincare. So by way of a few other little Beauty Heroes announcements, the Love More promotion this month is a travel mist from the brand Line. I've been like very impressed over time with Line's products, the charcoal body wash and the purify face wash. I think they're very, very high quality formulations. I don't love the packaging, but I've been very curious about other other skincare products from Line. So if you spend $125 in the Beauty Hero store, they throw in a travel refresh mist. There are some new products in the Beauty Hero store, but I, I'm, I'm blanking on what I shared with you last month. I think I had put up a screenshot of what was new, but I'm looking at this list now. So Innersense is now doing a dry shampoo that I'm very curious about as well as a finishing pomade, which is actually excellent timing because um, I like to use a pomade in the ends of my hair before doing a top knot. And I've been using the John Masters Organics one for years and I'm due to get another one, but I might try this Inner Sense pomade before I go back to my John Masters Organics. Osha has a vitamin C probiotic polish out now in the Beauty Heroes store. Um, it looks like there's some new soaps and soap accoutrement from Osmia. Sappho now has some lip glosses available, and then there's two new brands that Beauty Heroes is carrying, but I think I mentioned these last month, Beneath Your Mask and Ranavat Botanicals. I haven't tried anything from either brand. And then the last thing to give you a little bit of a preview about, so not this coming weekend, but the weekend of September 20, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, somewhere in there, whenever that weekend is, there's going to be something really exciting and noteworthy happening with some of the Beauty Heroes brand ambassadors and what we're we're bringing to you uh, the Beauty Heroes community so stay tuned you will absolutely be hearing from me and probably some of the other brand ambassadors that you may or may not follow I'm really looking forward to it it's been a long time in the making exciting things although it's always a little annoying when you watch beauty bloggers and they're like oh something so we're working on something so exciting but we can't talk about it yet and whatever but this is like in two weeks and you'll be hearing about it very very soon thank you so much for being here and i will look forward to seeing you in my next video soon bye